Hello, today's presentation is on chapter 5 of our lecture information security and today we are going to be talking about laws and ethics, policies and guidelines as well as security awareness. Okay, and these are the group members. Okay, and then, as I said earlier, I'm going to be talking about law and ethics, policies and guidelines and security awareness. Alright, so today's objectives are going to be basically centered on talking about law and information security. We're going to talk about ethics and information security, policies, standards, and practices that are important to information security and how information is classified. We are talking about cyber and information security. We are also going to talk about security education, training, and awareness programs that are undertaken in the process of information security. Okay, so continuing, we're going to talk basically about, you know, information security is one very important aspect of every, 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 of our everyday lives because basically we do everything by communicating, which involves a lot of transfer of data and information which we might want to protect and take care of. So today's, um, Today's presentation is going to basically talk about the laws and ethics that guide the process of information security. I'm going to talk about some policies and laws that we can put in place to ensure that information is really safe and secure. And also how to make people aware or create an awareness for security that um, for security of, of information. All right. So these practices aim at securing data and computer system and networks. Okay. And what this means is that some ethical issues are the core of cyber security practices and these practices are increasingly required to secure and protect the ability of human beings and individuals to also live safe and know that their information or whatever data that they work with is also secure. Okay. So we're going to talk about law and information security. Okay, so information security law it's, it's very important. It deals the body of legal rules and codes as well as standards that are needed to protect information and make sure that the systems which um, which, which 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 require information are also protected from unauthorized access. Okay. So all these legal um, issues and all these things are put in place to ensure that information is really secure. So some laws are put in place. To ensure that all information that is being dealt with, whether with the company or with individuals, are protected from unauthorized access and from being tampered with. Okay, so we're going to talk about before we talk about information security laws, there are many types of laws, different types, and we have some civil laws, we have criminal laws, tort laws, some private and public public laws. Okay, so civil laws basically has to do with laws that 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 govern the interactions or has to do with um, legal actions between normal people in the community that between civilians in the community so for example where you have somebody take a case of a land a land issue with someone else to court so it, it has to do with it has to do with um, an argument over something between two civilians or two common members of or common um, citizens of a community or the country, I should say. All right, so criminal law also has to do with um, um, legal issues that are concerned with criminal activity. You know, anything that's criminal that's taken to court is, is dealt with by criminal law. Yeah. And we have tort law is also an example or can be a subversion of civil law, which basically has to do with um, the destruction of property of the or those kind of things so when someone destroys something of yours and then you take it to court for legal assessment is is tort law that is put in place to ensure that the case or whatever it is is dealt with properly so these are just some basic examples of some type of laws that we have in a system and what we are focusing mainly on is going to be uh, information security laws okay so we're going to talk about some re relevant laws that are in place to ensure cyber security in our everyday lives 
We have the Cyber Security Enhancement Act of 2011, which basically addresses federal cyber security and the development of technical standards when it comes to cyber security and comes to information handling. Right, we have Cyber Intelligence Sharing and Protection Act, which also focused on information sharing and coordination and coordination and sharing of classified information among individuals and probably companies too. We also have Counterfeit Access Device and Computer Fraud and Abuse Act of 1984, which basically is a aims at prohibiting and actually stopping attacks on, on federal computer systems and, and especially those that are used by banks, interstate and foreign commerce and such companies. Uh, so we have the Electronic Communication Privacy Act of 1986, which actually prohibits unauthorized eavesdropping on electronic devices. Okay, so we can talk about many of these federal laws. We are continuing here. We have some Computer Act Security of 1987, the, the Paperwork Reduction Act of 1995, the Klinger Cohen Act of 1996, which also made up of agencies that are responsible for the adequacy of agency information security policies yes and all of these things so all of these um laws are aimed at ensuring information security so these are relevant laws that are very important for ensuring information security when it comes you yeah, know these are very important for ensuring information security so without these laws many times security with regards to information is not really really secure because you cannot really protect them Protect the security of, of the information that's being handled without these laws in place. Okay, so we also have some international laws and some legal bodies that are responsible for ensuring that these laws are, are, are enforced and then so that um, information is really, really kept secure and safe. So some councils has also, has, have also been created in Europe. Um, to address cyber crime and it's, 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 it was designed to create an international task force to oversee a range of security functions that's associated with activities over the internet and to standardize technology laws across international borders and also to attempt to improve the effectiveness of international investigation into breaches of technology law and conventions that are received by advocates of international rights for, um, property, oh, sorry, of intellectual property rights, with this emphasis on copyright inf infringement prosecution. Okay, so what this basically means is that there are these international laws and legal bodies, of which one was recently created, okay, by by the the Council of Europe, that was actually drafted by the European Council Cybercrime Convention, which basically deals with ensuring and enforcing some laws to ensure cyber security and to protect information okay we also have the united nations charter and which this one many times they have been um informed what we call information warfare where sovereign states or countries do in um, warfare based on information so it deals with assessing information and trying to gather information concerning other states to help in whatever um to help them whatever they are doing and, and they are conflict with each other and there are guidelines for these things so to some degree the United Nations Charter provides uh, provides some some measures for information security during information warfare as I said so information warfare as I said involves the use of information technology to conduct offensive operations as part of an organized and lawful military operation by sovereign states so as I said information warfare is is lawful it's a lawful military operation yes, which is undertaken by many countries like many developed countries actually undergo a lot of information warfare so the united nations charter actually puts measures in place to ensure that the information security information is quite secure during information warfare so so that nobody breaches whatever guideline that has been put in place and it's sort of a fair ground for these actions to take place okay so Basically, that's it for for that. We are going to move on to ethics and information security. All right, when we talk about ethics and information security, what has ethics got to do with information security? Okay, so when we talk about ethics, it means ethics literally means um, 
behavior that is generally accepted in society okay so ethics has to in turn uh, based on cultural modes or attitudes or customs that defined by a particular group of people so i'm going to talk about how ethics are important for information security and how they affect how people relate with information and the extent at which people and the measures or the limits people have in regard to information security okay so basically there are some basic commandments i should say that govern information security which we may term as ethics so these commandments may may not be necessarily voiced out or be um on a list or something but it's like ethics that are really common in in, in the world of information security so it says that should not use a computer to harm other people that should not interfere with other people's computers work computer work sorry that should not snoop around in other people's files that should not use a computer to steal that should not use a computer to bear false witness <laughs> you see that should not use a cop a copy use or copy software for which you have not paid which is many which you do many times that's in the case of piracy which you do so many times you have copied movies and music or whatever that you've not paid for and it also talks about thou shall not use other people's computer resources without authorization and that shall not appropriate other people's intellectual outputs that shall not think about the social consequences sorry that shall think about the social consequences of the program you write and that shall use a computer in way that show consideration and respect so these 10 commandments basically outline some basic ethics moral ethics or whatever it is to to guide the use of computers or the management of management and handling of information to ensure that people's information are kept safe and whatever you do with that with regard with information does not cause harm but rather is is good and um, beneficial to the handlers of such information uh, okay so but when it comes to ethics it's a very it's quite a tricky subject sometimes because ethics um, is every ethics are quite different wherever you go like you say in africa or let me be specific and say in ghana usually it's it's disrespectful to use your left hand to greet or to take something from someone one orderly person i should say yeah it's it's unethical here or it's something that we we think of as um, a disrespectful behavior but in a third world in the western world or in other developed countries it's not really a big deal so over there people don't consider such things as as disrespectful or unethical so ethical differences across cultures can really affect the system of information security so difference in cultures cause problems in determining what's ethical and what is not so just like i said when it comes to information security also the ethics about it is usually dependent on where you are and the people who are dealing with such information and studies of ethical sensitivity to computer use reveals that different nationalities and people from different places also have different perspectives about what is ethical with the use of computers and the use of information and what's not so this way some difficulties also arise in the ethical behaviors of 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 users of computers or people who handle information across different nationalities or different borders okay and so we have ethics and education so this is especially important in areas of information security because when you are dealing with um personnel of companies or personnel of of information information based um firms you they have you may not have the formal technical training to understand that whatever it is they do can be classified as ethical or on ethical so ethics really have to be taught on so the education on ethics when it comes to information security is actually very important because many people may not know that they act, their actions may be illegal or unethical so such education must also go into so employees also must be trained to kept to be kept sorry and kept aware of multiple topics topics that are related to information security okay so all this legal training is also very important in creating and, and managing and, and bringing out the best personnel who are involved in in the use of data in such companies and such places okay so we have the association of computer machinery 
which is a respected professional society established in 1947 as the world's first educational and scientific computing society. Okay, so Association of Computing Ma Machinery has a code of ethics that requires that its members also um, and partake in some or uh, perform some duties the which is which is befitting or is, is acceptable is is, is 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 classified as an acceptable behavior in ethical computing okay so such these codes also contain specific reference to protecting confidential information that also leads to or that's also aim that also aims at making sure that these these ethics or these codes prevent harm from being caused and 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 on uh, against the privacy of other people and also to respect the inter intellectual property and copyrights of others so acm that's the association of computer machining just has this course of ethics you know so that people or members of 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 of, of the association abide by and helps that and helps them to to have a clear-cut set of codes and et, et, and ethics sorry that will help them to protect information and also ensure that ethics are not people based but then we are all together following a particular set of codes so that the, the concept or the problem of people having different beliefs of what is ethically wrong or right might not interfere with the process of protecting or ensuring that information is safe okay so we also have the computer security institute which, which provides information and certification on on computer networking and security of information security pers personnel okay so it does not actually promote particular one single certificate but it also what it does that it provides the computer security institute provides a range of technical training classes you know for areas of internet security intrusion management network security forensics and technical networking okay so the csi is also another important institute that also helps to train people in in, in the areas of, of of internet security and also about intrusion management how to manage intrusion into um, networks and also technical how to how to how to, how to be technical about networking so I'm going to continue to talk about policies, standards, and practices that are put in place when it comes to um, information security. Okay, so policy management, security policy management is the process of identifying and implementing and managing the rules and procedures that every individual who is, let's say, in a company or in a firm that deals with information management must follow when they are assessing and using the resources or the assets of the said organization okay so the why, why policy management or why security policy management because the goal of policy management is is of this network security policy is just to address the threats and the stress against of against security and to put in place put measures in place to mitigate um, um IT security vulnerabilities as well it also defines um, a set of measures or a, syst a, 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 a system or some procedures that are taking place to to recover a system when it's compromised or when an intruder gets access to the network okay we have they are, what why why else why why they are important or why um why why security management is policies are very important because they aim at ensuring confidentiality sorry confidentiality now every 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 individual that deals with um, information or every firm or every organization that deals with um, um information it really considers that the confidentiality of their information for example consider um people sending text messages or, or via whatsapp okay i mean i wouldn't want to text someone and then have my my text be able to be accessed by a third party whether it's by the company that's accessing the company that's providing the services or by anybody else the who, who also is also using the same application or whatever 
and so confidentiality is one very important or key aspect of information security since everybody who deals with information or who deals with um yes who does with data or information is is very concerned about how confidential or how private their information is all right and talk about integrity now information integrity basically talks about the 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 correct state of the information that's been processed so like for example like using the same example sending an, um, a text over whatsapp i mean i would want that the same thing that i sent is what the person i'm sending the message to receives or i don't want to come and then realize that whatever message i sent has been misinterpreted or it's not the same message that was received at the other end of communication okay i'm going to talk about availability of such resources so security management policies also uh, aims at, at, at ensuring availability so means that whoever is authorized to access such information over whatever network or is has a continuous access no matter what time it is to what type whatever information that is kept there so like i said um let's say you're logging into an account or maybe a twitter account you have some information there whatever i mean it should be available to you all times whenever you want to log into access such information okay so it shouldn't be that maybe there's a particular point in time where you can access the information for no reason at all for such policies put in place that your your information is accessible and available to, available to you given that you are an authorized user or you are the one who is or you are the one who is required to access the information okay so information classification all right now when information are classified based on many criteria or i should say yeah so information classification is is very basically concerned with managing information to ensure that information is handled um separately or is handled with respect to their sensitivity to to reduce miscommunication or to 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 keep the importance of the information that's that's been kept or yeah that's been kept by whatever organization all right so data classification policies actually map out various components in the organization okay it actually considers every type of data that belongs to the organization and it classifies the data and stores it accordingly so the data may be categorized as either sensitive public confidential or personal this is very important because sometimes information that you have might be might not be offensive or might not be harmful when it's accessible to the public or whatever so you can access as you can classify it as public image uh, pub, sorry public a public message or public information and you also have some information that is sensitive which might also be classified as sensitive because they might give they might be offensive or they might be easily misinterpreted by unauthorized people who might access the information and some information might be confidential because they might not necessarily be for everybody to access and some information might also be personal so information classification is also very important in information security because when it's information is classified properly it helps to put some method some sorry some measures in place to know how to best protect and keep safe whatever information that is being put there okay so we are going to talk about security education training and awareness okay we've been talking this some um, for this this some the previous slides you've been talking about about ethics and you've been talking about some policy and standards and how information can be classified we've also talked about laws and information so we are going to talk about security education and training and awareness which is very very important because without this all of these talks about ethics when it comes to information security and education when it comes to information security will really be bogus because talking about them this does not necessarily um, make people understand or does not necessarily um, give people the, the tools or give people the know-how on how to go about in protecting the information that, that, that they are handling or whatsoever so we are going to be talking about security education training and awareness program so these 
basically help businesses or organizations to initially educate or keep their employees through some informative processes about basic security issues that come up with networking and the expectations that it might have in, and also to help them to prevent cyber security mistakes that also may also lead to data breaches so this, the program basically helps um, organizations to come up with so many measures okay, or educative processes that will help them educate their personnel who handle information and security issues and know what to do and what not to do so that they might not um, do some make some mistakes okay that will lead to some really 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 damaging data breaches that might affect the whole organization and all the individuals that are involved okay okay so understanding the whole process of security education training and awareness programs brings up the question of why then is it important okay so this program improves cyber security response um sorry the response when in in terms of when 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 such in, in cyber security incidents occur so because when the personnel and the employees are taken through um, a training process to understand what they are supposed to do and what what they're supposed to do in terms of of, of security breaches or data breaches and um, it will help them to have quick response time to to help manage the situation whatsoever it is and to also reduce the breaches or the chances of occurrence of a breach like i said earlier since they are put through um, some educational or training process they're able to to watch their behavior or ensure that they don't do particular things that will lead to some data breaches and also helps to improve the effectiveness of of currently deployed security tools so um, know-how technical know-how on how to go about using whatever infrastructure or whatever assets assets that the organization has will help them to come up with um, ways or help them to really use information the security tools properly in order to bring out the best effectiveness or the best output okay so it also helps leads to improved expertise of employees which is self-explanatory understanding the emerging cyber threats so it helps them to know which threats are actually the severity of threats that they may experience in the organization and in nature the next cyber defenders okay and social and personal responsibility and compliance so it helps them to come up with to build on their compliance rates and also help them to become more aware of their social and personal responsibilities when it comes to the when it comes to dealing with information okay all right so when building an inter-security education program for organizations or what about businesses it's important to take some some guidelines to consideration First of all, you must be able to define whatever network security, the goal of, of, of the process that you're about to take. So you have to define them, the objectives that or whatever it is that you want to impact to the employees or to the personnel that you are, you are putting through the training, what you want them to learn at the end of the training process and all these things. And you must, there must be a thorough assess of the audience or like I said, the personnel who are going to be going through the, the program to know how best to communicate whatever it is that is supposed to be communicated to them effectively to make sure that they really understand and will comply by whatever instructions is being given them and it must be based on critical issues the development of such program must also be based on critical issues the topics that are going to be addressed in such programs must be based on on practical issues or critical issues that are very important that they know so it's not about just coming up with a program for coming up sake but to help them to to actually talk about issues that are most likely to occur to them in, in their day-to-day day -day activities or that might affect them that they are easily they may easily encounter when dealing with when doing their work or so that they might actually have know-how on how to go about them and also there must be a consideration on how to distribute the security education to current and future employees so for example 
the process might the process might not necessarily have to be in person always it might also can also be through um, virtual means or media formats so that future employees will also be able to have access to these this training or whatever awareness program that took place yeah, when in the absence or before their contracts or before they were employed okay so we're going to talk about the design of security architecture okay every information security measure that's put in place must also have a particular architecture so security architecture and design looks at how information security controls and safeguards are implemented in IT system so it's a form of security design that helps organizations or companies to address what's necessary and possible potential risks that are involved in using the applications or computer application and network infrastructure so the design or architecture must also follow certain protocols so that so that how information and um, security controls and safeguards are easily implemented in IT systems so that whenever there's a measure or there's a process to go by to ensure information security is easily implemented because the architecture is follows a particular pattern okay so okay so we're going to talk about the components of security architecture all right now so security architecture basically consists of three major components Okay, these components, these components are the tools that are used, the people who are involved, and the procedures that are followed in the design and implementation and managing process of security features. All right. So, like I said, they are the tools, the people, and the procedures that are involved in the design and implementation of security features. All right. So, with whatever security feature that's being that's, that's being brought up, it must follow a particular architecture. Okay, so so it has particular tools and the people involved. They must take into consideration the tools that are used to assess such security features. They must also take into consideration the people who are going to use the security features and the procedures that are going to be followed when when implementing such features. Right. So security architecture experts must also apply the policies that outline the management expectation to align the components effectively. All right. So they must also have a deeper expectation, sorry, a deeper understanding of how the architecture is going to be implemented and enforced within the organization with respect to the use of the components of these security components. Okay. I'm going to talk about more about components of security architecture. Now, talking about security architecture, we have firewall, the components of security architecture, we have fire, fire, firewall, which is basically a device okay or a measure that's put in place to to, to ensure selective um, access to information in the organization so a firewall may be uh, it's just a measure that's put in place to make sure that information is not accessed by unauthorized users or people who are not as um, who are not supposed to access the information or basically unauthorized people all right so we have the militarized zone that's a no man's land between the inside and outside networks. Now companies place web servers there okay, to ensure that people that like literally as the name means that's a no man's land. The demilitarized zone okay is the area between the, the inside and the outside networks. Okay, where or not so people are not really given access to because of sensitive information and how important such places are. Right. So here we have intrusion detection systems. So this system just detects unauthorized or let's say weird activities on organizational networks or individual machines or it can be both to so choose IDS that the intuition detection systems detect or they, um, they, they notify the, the management or whoever is in charge of the network of strange activity that's going on on the network to help protect the the the, the the integrity or help secure whatever information it has information across the network okay all right so that brings us to the end of our slides or our presentation for today so basically we spoke about the laws and information okay we spoke about some laws 
that govern the use of information some some acts that protect information use we also talk about ethics and information security we're talking about how some we talk about the 10 commandments of computer use and then we talked about how ethics also differ based on the cultural backgrounds or the level of education of individuals who are using such information we talk about our policies standards and practices that are put in place to ensure that information is safe and, and, and right. We're also talking about information classification, how information can be classified based on the either their sensitivity or classified into whether they can be public, they can be sensitive, they can be private or either confidential. That's basically based on the content of the information that's gathered. And finally, we talked about security education and training awareness, which has to do with program a program that's that's um, respective to whatever organization and and we also talked about how measures the, the measures can be put in place to 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 take the personnel and the employees of such organizations which deal with information to um, measures that can be put in place to teach them or to take them through um, a tutorial on how to go about data breaches and how to take how to behave themselves in the workplace and what to do and what not to do to ensure that data breach is does not okay and in the case of a data breach what they must do and what what they might they, they must they must do and what they might not do in order to ensure that the system is recovered successfully or the system is recovered with um the least 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 um, damage to the system okay and we also talk finally about we also talk finally about security architecture. Okay, we talks about how every system, every organization has a particular security system or architecture that's based on the personnel they used and how their system practically works. All right, so this brings us to the end of our presentation on law and ethics, policy and guidelines, and security awareness. Thank you very much.